Hey everyone, Andy Raffel from eTechnics.com and today sees the launch of the new, I don't even know how to start this, refresh Comet Lake S processors. Let's do this. The Virtuoso RGB Wireless SE headset from Corsair. With a sleek premium lightweight design, comfortable memory foam ear cups and subtle RGB lighting, it doesn't look like your typical gaming headset. With a detachable broadcast grade microphone, patented slipstream wireless technology and tuned 50mm neodymium premium drivers, it's simply the best headset Corsair have ever created. Find out more by clicking the link in the description below. So, unless you've been living under a rock for the last year, you'll know that AMD have pretty much been taking a huge market share away from Intel. I guess some would argue that Intel kind of got a little bit complacent in the past. AMD have obviously taken that as an opportunity and taken over, especially when it comes to sort of getting that balance of having high core processors, decent frequencies and mixing the two together. Well, now I guess it's time for Intel to fight back a little bit. Now I'm gonna warn you, the new processors, we have the i5 and the i9, so the 10600K and the 10900K, essentially are a refresh of a refresh of a refresh. I know, it gets a little bit confusing, but you've got to sort of go back in time and look at uh, Comet Lake, look at Comet Lake S, what we have now, Coffee Lake, and you can see obviously certain similarities. Now the rumor mill would suggest that with this being 14 nanometer, plus, 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 hopefully you kind of get the joke there, that all Intel have done is maybe strapped on another two cores, increase the frequency and away you go. But after testing this, I've got to be honest, I think there's a lot more to it than first meets the eye. So let's talk about pricing and talk about specs. So starting with the i9-10900K, it's launching at $529.99 in the US and £529.99 in the UK. Considering the comparison against the i9-9900K at launch, that came in at $479.99. So I guess you could argue inflation has caused that price to go up just a little bit. In terms of the i5-10600K, that's launching at $262 in the US and £274.99 in the UK. To put that into perspective, the i5-9600K actually came in a little bit more expensive, around $274 to $279. So what about specs wise? What do we actually get? Well, this for starters is a little media kit. Sadly, you're never gonna be able to actually buy this as a retail customer, but you gotta admit it does look pretty cool. And it's something that I guess whenever we get something from AMD or Intel, they always try and jazz it up with these fancy boxes. I don't know whether it's them trying to sort of do something nice that looks good on camera or whether they're just trying to, you know, win one over on us. Either way, I'm not too disappointed with this. So we've got both, both of the processors, the i5 and the i9. So let's start with the i9 and talk about what you actually get in terms of the specs. So to start with, you get 10 cores, which consequently with hyper-threading means that you get 20 threads. This is two cores up from the previous generation 9900K. It's also four threads up from the previous generation. Base frequency wise, we're looking at 3.7 gigahertz, which is 100 megahertz up from the previous generation. Now, turbo is where things get quite interesting. So the max turbo is 5.3 gigahertz, which is 300 megahertz up on the previous generation. This is based on single core speeds, as we all know, but they also now have TVB, or thermal velocity boost, which is also 5.3 gigahertz. This means that it can boost up to 5.3 gigahertz in single and multi-core workloads. Now in our testing, we actually saw this happen on not just a single core, but occasionally on dual core. A lot of it comes down to thermal properties. If it is gonna be sitting uh, below 70 degrees, then in theory, it does have the thermal headroom there uh, to do so. Now, a lot of it also depends on power and sort of how much power headroom and uh, leeway it has there. And I've got to be honest, we did have some problems with a lot of our Z490 boards, especially when it came to power delivery. And I think maybe that's why at first we wasn't getting the, the right results that we should have done. And a lot of it actually involved having quite a few different BIOS updates. And this was the case for Asus, Gigabyte and MSI. Now the other turbo technology that the i9 has is Turbo Boost Max 3.0. Now, with this, it basically means that it can boost up to 5.2 gigahertz. Obviously, if you're doing anything with AVX instructions like Cinebench R20, you are gonna be limited by the AVX speed, which I believe on the i9 processors, 4.8 gigahertz, but occasionally can actually peak up to 4.9 gigahertz. Now, as I did mention, we did have some major problems with this. I mean, even at the time of filming this, which is actually the day before, pretty much about 28 hours before the launch of these new processors, 
I'm still getting sent BIOS updates asking us if we can retest. And sorry, that's just not gonna happen. So yes, we had some problems, but I don't think all of it comes down to Asus MSI and Gigabyte, and I'm not even blaming just Intel for it. I think potentially we could be looking at a hotfix coming, sort of maybe in the next coming weeks. This is something that we actually saw very similar to kind of what happened on Z390 with the way that Windows essentially can handle the affinity and how it assigns it to various different cores, especially when you look at how it prioritizes cores. So when I was testing the i9, I found that the Core 0 and the Core 1 were basically the favorite cores. And you can check this by going into CPU Z and looking at the clock speeds and seeing which ones are actually denoted in red. So yes, it showed that, and occasionally I did see it boosting up to 5.3. And you'll see exactly what that kind of translated to in our Cinebench scores, especially Cinebench R15 single core workload. Before the BIOS kind of update and fix, we was getting scores of around 213 points. With the BIOS fix, which was allowing that TVB mode to come in, the scores were going up to sort of 224, all the way up to about 228, depending on the motherboard that we were actually testing it with. Now, while the i9 is obviously the, the kind of halo product in this stack, we have got the i5 10600K as well. So let's talk a little bit about the specs there and what makes this i5 so different to any other i5 that Intel's ever brought out. So to start with, it has six cores and it also has 12 threads. Now, this is probably the most interesting part of the 10600K. It has 12 threads, but it only has six cores. It has hyper-threading at long last. So yes, I guess they're trying to make something a lot more powerful, yet still remaining affordable. This is where I think things are gonna get quite interesting because while the i9 is obviously the thing that everyone wants, imagine it as the Bugatti Veyron, everyone technically is gonna go out and buy the Volkswagen Golf. So what about the clock speed on the i5? Well, we're actually looking at a clock speed base clock of 4.1 gigahertz. So this is a slight increasement from uh, sort of the, you know, the previous generation. Plus obviously we now have all these extra I guess, virtual cores, if you want to call threads cores. What about the boost speed though? Of course, it does have turbo uh, technology as well. And this is up to 4.8 gigahertz, which is up again a little bit on the previous generation from 4.6 gigahertz. So while admittedly, if you looked at these figures, it would seem like, yes, they've strapped another couple of cores on there and they've, uh, you know, increased speeds by two to 300 megahertz. With the i5, you do get so much more than just, you know, what's at face value in terms of hyper-threading. And that's gonna make a huge difference, especially with game developers kind of trying to, I guess, enhance the way that multi-core workloads work inside games now. I think the i5 is really gonna make for an interesting product when it comes to new games that are gonna be coming out the in the future that can really sort of harness that extra power and performance of multi-threaded processors. So if you wanted to go out and buy one of these processors, what does it actually mean? Well, sadly, you will have to go and buy a new motherboard based around the Z490 chipset, because even though the processor kind of looks the same as any other existing processor out there, it no longer uses Socket 11 5X. It now uses Socket 1200, which is essentially gonna be what Rocket Lake is gonna support when that comes out in hopefully the near future, which is gonna open up a lot of things like PCI Express 4.0 technology. If you actually look at some of the motherboard reviews and videos that we have done, you will see that a lot of the motherboards out there do actually have PCI Express 4.0 hardware baked into the board. So that's the PCB, the turbo clock, the actual slots themselves and so forth. Sadly though, this processor doesn't have it, which I know all the AMD fanboys out there right now are probably screaming and laughing at the screen, sort of saying, I can't even believe that this has, hasn't, you know, got PCI Express 4.0 technology, but it has got a few other little extras. So you do get Intel Wi-Fi 6AX, you do get USB 3.2 Gen 2, pretty much in an abundance. So if you look at again, any of the motherboard kind of videos and content that we've done, you will see that there are a lot of features now that you get uh, for your money when it comes to Intel. Now, I'm gonna be honest, before I'd even had this processor, uh, both of them in my hands or any of the Z490 motherboards, you guys have probably seen it as well. All of the rumors circulating around in regards to temperatures and power consumption. And I've gotta be honest, based on my own testing, we were using you know, some pretty high-end gear when it came to trying to keep things cool, uh, decent power supply and so forth it all seems like it was pretty much fabricated. There was no sort of, you know, massive temperatures. When you're overclocking, yes, you expect them to go up a little bit higher, but even then I was pretty happy with the results that were kind of, you know, coming in. And we will sort of show you all the benchmarks and everything and also overclocking. But let's talk about the test bench a little bit. 
Now, when it comes to testing these, we actually revamped all of our testing. We used an MSI Z490 Godlike, of which we do have a video and a written review of, so go and check that out. Uh, we used 16 gig of team group memory, uh, DDR4 3000 megahertz to keep everything as fair as possible, even when testing older generation stuff as well. Uh, on top of that, we had an NVIDIA 2080 Super Founders Edition, which we used on all of our test benches. So even going back to sort of i7 7700Ks and, you know, even newer stuff from AMD, newer stuff from Intel, all of the test bench was essentially, apart from the motherboard, the same. We used a Noctua D15S to keep temperatures nice and cool with a single fan. And uh, for the most part, we left, well, the BIOS on optimized defaults on everything. So uh, yeah, wanted to kind of get that out of the way so you guys can have a little bit of transparency with our testing methodologies. So yeah, I guess without further ado, let's run them glorious benchmarks. So there's the benchmarks and I'm pleasantly surprised. It seems like Intel are kind of back in the game, especially when it comes to gaming performance. I mean, we all knew that with the i9-9900K, they were the king of gaming when it came to FPS. That's kind of what it all mattered about. When it comes to, I guess, rendering and workload stuff, AMD still have it there, but a lot of that comes down to extra cores and the, I guess, newer architecture. You have to remember, this is a refresh of a refresh of a refresh. So I think when Rocket Lake does hit, there's gonna be some very interesting stuff. But obviously by that point, we should in theory be expecting AMD's fourth generation Ryzen processors. So I've got to admit, I am very, very excited and I hope that you guys are too, because there's only gonna be one winner that comes out of all of this and that is gonna be us as consumers. So kind of really, really looking forward to that one. 
Now, when it came to overclocking, we wanted to keep things as fair as possible, being 14 nanometer, plus, 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 plus. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we didn't go too heavy on the voltage, and we wanted to make it you know, as fair as physically possible. So what we did is we cranked the voltage up to 1.35 volts, on both of these processors, we kept just increasing the multiplier as far as we could. And then when we were able to get something where we knew that we couldn't go any further, we tried clawing that voltage back down. So what we do is uh, we just put some screenshots of CPU-Z up on the screen now, and you'll be able to see exactly how the i5 10600K and the i9 10900K performed and what kind of voltages we were actually looking at. So with the overclocking out of the way, obviously we need to see how that's gonna translate to real world performance. So again, we've got some more graphs here. Let's roll them. So there you have it guys, i5 10600K, i9 10900K. Obviously there's gonna be AMD fanboys, obviously there's gonna be Intel fanboys. Let me know where you kind of sit. Are you just one who wants the best value money CPU you can find? Because I think the i5 is a tremendous little chip in all honesty. You know, the 10900K, not everyone's gonna go out and buy it. And some people maybe have already moved on to the AMD hype train. Obviously you don't get a lot for this because it is a refresh. And I think for the most part, this might might be foreseen as a bit of a stopgap. People are going to go out and buy a Z490 motherboard with one of these processors. Then when Rocket Lake hits, they're going to take their processor out, put that in there, get PCIe Gen 4, get all the new features that Rocket Lake are going to give you. And potentially, I don't know, maybe that's going to be something that can really, really rival AMD. Because, I don't know, it seems like it's been a bit quiet from Team Blue. But maybe this is just... The way that I'm going to see it is the start of things to come. This isn't the final product for what Intel are hoping to sort of do in terms of taking back that market share. It's just a little taster, a little teaser. And I'm really looking forward to what comes out at sort of the later end of this year with Rocket Lake and with AMD 4th Gen Ryzen. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. Let me know which one you'd actually go for. Or would you go for the i7, something in between when that hits. Until next time, guys, I'll see you in the next one. See you later. Bye-bye.